Bonjour mes amis. Welcome to my channel, The French Station, the right stop for learning French. My name is Vignesh, your teacher and friend. I'm very thrilled to help you on your French learning journey and to make the language fun and easy for you. In this video, let's discuss the grammar topics from lesson 5 from the newest edition of the book, Apprenons le Français, part 3. In the previous video, we went through the unseen passage from lesson 5 and we also uh, uh, discussed the exercises based on these unseen passage. Now let's go ahead with the vocabulary and the grammar section. The first grammar topic that we have over here is le verbe savoir et connaître. The verbs savoir and connaître. Uh, in English, both these verbs, savoir and connaître, both of them translate to to know, K-N-O-W. Uh, however, the, uh, in French, we have two words for that. One is savoir, it's an irregular IR verb and connaître is an irregular RE verb. Um, let's first go through the conjugation and uh, we'll also discuss what is the difference between uh, these two verbs. Uh, where to use the verb savoir, where to use the verb connaître. So the conjugation for the verb savoir goes like this. Je, tu, il or elle, say. Nous savons, vous savez, il, elle, save. As you can see that savoir is an irregular IR verb. Then the conjugation for the verb connaître goes like this. Je tu, il, elle, connaît, nous connaissons, vous connaissez, il, elle, connaissent. Uh, so this is how we conjugate the verbs savoir and connaître. Now let's learn the differences between these two verbs. Savoir, to know facts or information. So when you are talking about um, any particular uh, information that you know, or any fact or any skill that you know, like if you want to say, I know how to swim, I know how to dance, I know how to sing, um, etc. We use the verb savoir. For example, you can say, je sais nager, I know how to swim. That way, if you want to say, she knows how to uh, swim, you can say, elle sait nager. If you want to say, we know how to dance, you can say, nous savons uh, danser. And if you want to say, they, like a group of girls, they know how to sing, you can say, elle save chante. This way, to talk about any um, uh, skills that you uh, know, you can, uh, that time we use the verb savoir. So, a few more examples, we can say, tu sais, uh, don't say, you know how to dance, um, uh, tu sais, uh, lear, you know how to read, etc. Uh, the second example given over here is, elle sait la date de mon anniversaire. She knows my birth date. Mm, so, it's a fact, right? It's a fact or an information. So, to say that you know a, a fact or an information, we use the verb savoir. Like that, we can say, Elle sait mon numéro de passeport. She knows my passport number. Um, elle sait, uh, for example, Elle sait uh, uh, la date d'anniversaire de, de mon père. She knows my father's birthday, etc. Then the third example is, vous savez où il habite? Do you know where he lives? That's also like a fact or an information. Um, you can ask, vous savez où elle habite? Do you know where she lives? Vous savez um, uh, à quelle heure est le train? Do you know at what time is the train? Etc. Uh, but the verb connaître, uh, this also means to know. And it, it, it is used uh, when you are acquainted with a person, when you know a person very well, a place or a thing. When you know a person, place or a thing very well, we use the verb connaître. Even to say that you know something by heart, um, we, um, we use the verb connaître. Example, je connais cet homme. It means I know this person, like you, you know uh, him pretty well. Um, the second example, elle connaît Paris. So, elle connaît Paris is, she knows Paris well. She knows, um, like she's aware of the neighborhoods, the monuments, the, she, she knows the city, uh, Paris, Paris. She's, she knows in and around of Paris. 
Then the third example is il connaisse ce poem. They know this poem, meaning they, they know it well. They have memorized this poem. So these are small differences between the verb savoir and connaître. Uh, but in English, they mean the same. Both these verbs mean to know. Let's move ahead. Les adverbes interrogatives. Interrogative adverbs. Um, in the previous chapter, we've already learned how to ask yes or no questions um, using the three methods. Then we've also learned questions like qui es, uh, qu'est-ce que c'est, etc. Uh, qui es means who is this or who is that, who are these or who are those, and qu'est-ce que c'est means what is this or what is that, what are these or what are those. Now we will learn about interrogative adverbs. Interrogative adverbs are nothing but words like where, when, why, how, um, how many, etc. And these are used to ask um, specific questions. Like if I, if someone asks you, where are you going? Where are you studying? Where are you, um, uh, where are you coming back from? They would like to know the specific place, right? Like that we use the word when, uh, uh, maybe when you want to know uh, the time, like when are you coming back from the school or when do you have the concert? When do you have to submit the project work? So let's go through some of the interrogative adverbs in French. Où means where. And using the word où, um, you can uh, you can say où habitez-vous? Where do you live? Où est-ce que vous habitez? Where is it that you live? So you, we can see that où is either followed by inversion or it is followed by esque and then rest of the sentence. So like that you can say où étudiez-vous? Where do you study? Or où est-ce que vous étudiez? Where is it that you study? Où travaillez-vous? Uh, where do you work? Or où est-ce que vous travaillez? Where is it that you work? The second interrogative adjective is quand. Quand means when. Um, so using that you can ask questions like quand viens tu? Quand est-ce que tu viens? When are you coming? Or when is it that you're coming? Then the third example, um, como. Como means how. And uh, uh, using that we can ask questions like Comment joue-t-elle? How is she playing? Comment est-ce qu'elle joue? How is it that she is playing? Uh, you can also uh, ask questions like Comment what you? How are you doing? Comment est-ce que tu vas? How is it that you're doing? Etc. Then combien de or combien de apostrophe means how much or how many? And um, the question combien de is always followed by a noun. Like you can see combien de is followed by a noun. It can be any noun like chocolat, livre, bonbon, etc. And after the noun, uh, we, we use the inversion or we use esque. So, uh, for example, combien de chocolat and then the inversion, achète tu. How many chocolates are you buying? Or combien de chocolat est-ce que tu achètes? How many chocolates is it that you're buying? Like that you can say, uh, uh, combien de langues parle tu? How many languages do you talk? Combien de langues est-ce que tu parle? How many languages is it that you speak? Or you can say, um, combien de livres are tu? How many books do you have? Or combien de livres est-ce que tu as? How many books is it that you have? And you can also ask short questions using combien de. You can just say, combien d'élèves? How many students? Combien de livres? How many books? Combien de stylo? How many pens? Combien de crayons? How many pencils? Mm, let's move ahead. Pourquoi? Pourquoi means why. Um, and using this, you can ask questions like Pourquoi sort-il? Why is he leaving? Or Pourquoi est-ce qu'il sort? Why is it that he's leaving? Pourquoi chant tu? Why are you singing? Or you can also say Pourquoi est-ce que tu chant? Why is it that you're singing? So these are some of the basic question words, interrogative adverbs. Uh, we, we will also be learning more interrogative adverbs um, as we move ahead with the lessons. Uh, note, the answer to the question pourquoi by using the word parce que, um, which means because. So when someone asks us why in English, we uh, in the answer we say because, 
right? And the word for because in French is parce que. So if you, if someone were to ask you, pourquoi sort-il? Why is he leaving? You can say, il sort parce qu'il est, uh, il est en retard. He's leaving because he's running late. So the word parce que means because. And uh, we change parce que to parce q u apostrophe in front of vowels or mute head. So if you want to say because he or because she, we say parce qu'il or parce qu'elle. Let's move ahead. Um, où faites-vous les courses? Where do you do your purchasing or where do you do your shopping? This is an expression, faire les courses. Faire les courses uh, um, or uh, faire du shopping means to do the purchasing or to do the uh, uh, shopping. All right. So, faire les courses means to do the uh, purchasing or to do the shopping. So, uh, where do you go shopping for food? Okay. On peut faire les courses au supermarché. We can go shopping uh, for food in the supermarket. We can go purchasing in the supermarket. Là, on trouve tous les produits. Over there, we find all the products. On peut aussi acheter les produits dans des boutiques spécialisées. We can also buy uh, the uh, products in specialized uh, boutiques or specialized uh, shops. Pour acheter d'autres choses comme des vêtements, des chaussures, etc., on visite des magasins. To buy other things such as clothes, uh, shoes, etc., we go to shops. Mm. So here are some of the specialized uh, shops. La boulangerie, the bakery. In the bakery, what do we usually find? Il y a le pain, les croissants, les baguettes, etc. À la boulangerie. So there's, there's bread, um, croissants and baguettes, etc. in the boulangerie, bakery items. Uh, then there's something called as la pâtisserie. La pâtisserie uh, is usually like a boulangerie only. Sometimes in um, uh, most of the times you'll find that um, in the bakery itself, they sell all the pastry items. Uh, but la pâtisserie is the pastry shop. Um, so, il y a toutes sortes de gâteaux, tartes, brioches, éclairs, etc. Et la pâtisserie. There are all sorts of cakes and pastries like pies, brioche is a French pastry, éclair is a kind of French pastry. So, you'll find all these in the pastry shop. Then we have la boucherie. La boucherie is nothing but a butchery. Pour la viande, it's, for, it's meant for meat, bœuf, poulet, mouton, etc. On va la boucherie. So for buying uh, beef, chicken, mutton, all sorts of meat items, we go to the butchery. La crèmerie is the dairy shop. Pour le beurre, le fromage, les produits laitiers, on va la crèmerie. Uh, for butter, cheese and milk products, dairy products, we go to the dairy shop. Produit laitier is nothing but dairy products. Let's read ahead. L'épicerie, the spice shop. Um, so it's given, c'est une sorte de petit uh, supermarché. It's a sort of uh, small supermarket. You'll find all the spices, essentials. Um, you'll be able to find so many things like, as you can see from the image, pickles, ketchup, vinegar, um, you know, uh, uh, cheap wines, etc. Uh, so it's given over here, on peut acheter le thé, le café, les épices et toutes sortes de produits uh, à l'épicerie. So we can buy tea, coffee, spices and all sorts of products in the spice shop. Then le marché, marché is nothing but the market. On peut acheter, uh, on peut acheter les légumes et les fruits uh, frais au marché. We can buy fresh fruits and vegetables in the market. Then, la poissonnerie, the fish market, pour les fruits de mer, uh, for the seafood. The word les fruits de mer means uh, fruits of sea. In English, we say the seafood. So, like poisson, crab, crevette, escargot, vitre, etc. We go to the poissonnerie. So, for buying fish, crabs, and all the other uh, seafood items, we uh, go to the uh, fish shop. They've given a note point. Uh, it is on le pronom sujet on. Uh, 
so we have learned the subject pronouns uh, uh, subject pronouns are nothing but words like shirt you il el etc uh, along with il or el uh, there's one more subject pronoun which is o n o and this pronoun o n means one um, or we in a general sense like when we say uh, one must uh, go to the supermarket or to buy fish one goes to the fish market one can buy uh, coffee tea etc from the spice shop so when we use one in a general sense um, it me uh, we use the subject pronoun o in french and in spoken french many people prefer using the word o instead of saying no all right so it's given over here though o is, is used in the plural sense it, it's conjugate its conjugation with the verb is in the third person singular so the conjugation is always in the il l form so um, if you want to say um, if you want to say he can we say il peut he can buy is il peut acheter right similarly if you want to say she can buy we say l per ashate and if you want to say one can buy we say um per ashate so if you take a look at this the conjugation uh, for the subject pronoun o is same as the il l uh, conjugation and that is what is given over here couple of examples on va la boucherie we are going to the butchery um per ashate the legume we can buy vegetables so this is about the subject pronoun o it means one in a general sense or in spoken french it's also it's also used in place of the word no um, then it's given over here for les magasins et les boutiques uh, spécialisées référer au bilan so for more vocabulary on different kinds of shops and specialized uh, boutiques you can refer to the bilan section So with this, we complete the grammar uh, topics uh, from lesson five. In the next video, let's discuss the exercises. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please subscribe to my channel, The French Station, to get notified on the upcoming videos. Like it and share it with your friends as well. Until then, abhiyanto. See you soon.